Hi, Info. Hi. Welcome to the last chapter. It's going to happen. Don't know. Yeah. yeah. It was over. At last, it was done. Sally Bones was gone. Oh, Jack, you did it, you did it! Holly's spiky fur rippled in the sunlight as she came towards him. He slumped down in the tower, hardly able to believe it. Did I really make it? he said. Did I hold on till dawn? You did! You beat Sally Bones! He shook his head in wonder. Couldn't have done it without you, Holly. I know. Now stop pleading. You're making a mess. Gently, she licked his wings. As she did, he watched the daylight streaming into the bell tower. He watched the dust swirling in the light. And he watched Holly. Her eyes had definitely changed. One was mustard coloured, the other ice blue. It was strange, yet both her eyes were shining with new hope. She looked at him, met his gaze, looked deep into his eyes. It felt like she was seeing inside him with her ice blue eye, seeing his secrets, laying him bare, just as Sally Bones had done. But this was Holly, his friend, and this time he felt no fear, no darkness no despair. He just felt the loveliest warmth flowing between them once again. She nodded. So you did it, Barjack Paul, she said softly. You actually climbed a mountain. He smiled. There was so much to tell her, so much to share. And guess what else? We found where all the mice go in winter. It's the best hunting ever. And wait till you meet Crutch's family and... Crutch's family? Yes, and I wouldn't have made it without them either. All the Scratch sisters, all Razor. Come on, said Holly, let's go. There's not much more I can do about these wounds. There'll be scars everywhere, but you'll live. They limped down the, step, down the stairs together, very slowly, a step at a time. It was a long way down. Barjack was so tired, and every muscle, every bone, every strand of fur ached. But as they made it down the final steps, out of the tower, he felt lifted once again. But there were his friends waiting for him and Holly in the graveyard. They were going wild, cheering and whooping into dawn. Clutch and his brothers were yelping with joy. The Orable Twins were dancing on the tombstones. Razor and the Scratch Sisters were dancing with them. I knew you'd do it, bubbled Tam. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Grandma always said he would, purred Jess. Sally Bones' cats were in total disarray. Her captains approached Varjak very cautiously. They were still rubbing their eyes. Did he really beat the boss? said Luger. How? Nobody can beat her. She's the greatest fighter who ever lived. Not anymore, said Holly. Varjak won. That makes him the greatest. Varjak Paul, his friends hailed him. Varjak Paul, Varjak Paul. Was he hearing right? Could he really be the greatest after all? It wasn't possible. But the greatest friends, the greatest pack, the greatest gang in the world. Yes. Oh yes, no doubt about that. A slow smile spread across his face and he looked up at the sky. The sun was rising high. It was a beautiful morning. There's been enough fighting in this city, Barjat said to Sally Bones' as captains. There'll be no more. We're going back to the centre and we're going in peace. The centre is our territory. You can't come and tell us what to do anymore. Our law runs there now. The law of freedom. It's a free city for free cats and nothing you can do ever change that. Sally Bones' as captains looked at each other, still dazed. And then, one by one, they stood aside. Silent, heads bowed, tails behind their legs. They parted to let him go and his friends go through. Barjack and Holly led the way, with Tam and Jess behind, beside them. Razor, the Scratch Sisters and the Horrible Twins 
Flankson, Cludge, Buster and Bombalulu brought up the rear, barking happily into the dawn. Together they made their way out of the graveyard, back across the river, through the streets and alleys to the centre of their city. Everyone was talking about how Barjat Poor beat Sally Bones. The tale would be told again and again in times to come. It would be remembered on long winter nights. In their darkest hours, it would give them hope. For all the free cats, life in the city began again that morning. As they went back to their homes, their alleys, their harbour, the sun rose higher and higher in the sky. The sky was clear and blue and the sun shone amber in the blue. Its rays reflected on great glass towers and tall brown buildings alike. Everything gleamed in the bright, silent sunlight. The whole city sparkled and shone. The sun began to melt the winter snow. Soon it would become a stream, a warm, clear stream of water that would wash the streets clean, then flow out through the river to make its way in wide, strong currents out towards the sea. Winter was over. Spring would soon begin. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's such a nice ending. Yeah, so spring is about new beginnings, isn't it? And it sounds like it's definitely going to be a whole new beginning for the cats in that city. So, hope you enjoyed reading or listening to The Outlaw of Paul. I know I did. Yeah, I can't believe we finished it. So from now on, we're going to be reading you probably shorter stories, a different story each day. So still tune in to our three o'clock reads. We miss you. We do so much. Have a lovely half term. Bye. Bye bye.